The First Amendment to the Constitution says, the government cannot prohibit the free exercise of religion. Churches, synagogues, mosques, all are welcome to peacefully practice and preach as they see fit. So why have some government officials acted like COVID-19 canceled the First Amendment? For religious believers, gathering for worship and fellowship is a religious command. So is serving and meeting the needs of others. When COVID-19 came to the U.S., churches complied with the initial curve-flattening rules and then set out to find creative ways to meet and serve the needs of families and communities while keeping them safe, often adopting practices that exceeded CDC guidelines. But that wasn't enough for some government officials who made it clear that when it comes to constitutional freedoms, churches take a backseat to almost every other group. States, counties, and cities across the nation shut down churches, fined and cracked down on people who held prayer services, and worst of all, blatantly violated the First Amendment by using one standard for houses of worship and another more lenient standard for gyms, restaurants, bars, and shopping malls. In Nevada, Governor Steve Sisolak decided that casinos could operate at half capacity, but church gatherings could have no more than 50 people, no matter the building size. So a casino that holds 2,000 people on its gaming floor could welcome 1,000 people to gamble, while a church the same size could welcome just 50 to worship. Although the U.S. Supreme Court denied an emergency application to halt the law, Justice Samuel Alito's dissent perfectly captured the absurdity. The Constitution guarantees the free exercise of religion, Justice Alito wrote, It says nothing about the freedom to play craps or blackjack, to feed tokens into a slot machine, or to engage in any other game of chance. This same sort of discrimination against churches also took place in Kansas, where Governor Laura Kelly decided, just five days before Easter, that churches could only meet in groups of up to 10 congregants. But bars, restaurants, shopping malls, and libraries were safe gathering places Also during Holy Week, a town in Mississippi sent teams of police officers to bust up a drive-in church service, handing out $500 per person fines for church members who were sitting in a church parking lot with their windows rolled up. While that was happening, the Sonic just down the street was continuing its car window and drive-in services. As U.S. Attorney General William Barr said, the Constitution doesn't get suspended during times of crisis. But in America in 2020, that's exactly what happened. In response, Alliance Defending Freedom took legal action well over a dozen times, scoring 14 victories for churches and religious ministries whose governments engaged in blatant religious discrimination. During the most difficult times in our nation's history, times like the Great Depression, World War II, and 9-11, people have turned to the church, not the shopping mall, for refuge, comfort, and help. These churches need to be open so they can serve their communities. They need to be open to mourn those who died. They need to supply food for those who lost their job. They need to serve as a beacon of hope for those struggling with loneliness and depression. A pandemic shows how important, how essential the church really is. It also reveals a truth, that the nature of government is that every time it flexes a muscle, it gets stronger. Do you really want to give politicians and public health bureaucrats the power to tell you when and how you can and can't practice your religion? The history of nations shows us why giving the government that type of power, for any reason, is something no society should ever gamble with. And keeping that power away from the government is why America was founded in the first place.